Mother was in, was active in the 1967 Milton Susquehanna Centennial, okay. which would have been 150 years. So I brought some some items specific to her. Mm -hmm. That's how I looked at this. So. Okay. Is there any, so, anything? Should I just pick out one item out of here, or? Um, we can we can go through them. First, um, could you please just tell us your name? Am I being filmed yet? Yeah, we started. Okay, well, you're gonna let me know. <laughs> uh, George Woodling. Okay. And can you tell us about the items that you brought today? Yes. Uh, I think I'll start with the uh, the flat iron mm -hmm. that was produced by uh, the American Car Works, and you can see the ACW uh, here. The American Car Works was a major industry in Milton. It still exists under the American Car and Foundry, ACF. And uh, this, this is an item that was uh, created prior to World War II because in World War II, most iron materials were used for the war effort. Okay. So this is probably from the 1930s. Okay, wow. Uh, my brother was a musician, was in the band, and uh, I haven't seen any others of these, but I know they have to be around, and this has been through uh, the 1972 flood in Melton. You can okay. see a little bit of water damage, but the, the record itself is in very good shape. You know this is a record. Yes. Oh, okay. Just <laughs> wanted, I have a collection. Just actually. wanted to make sure. <laughs> uh, and they actually made a record of the Spring Band Festival in 1964. Wow. May of 1964. So, 53 years, would that be right? 63 years. No. 53 years. Yes, yeah, 53 years. And what's interesting is on the back they listed all the musicians okay. by uh, what instrument they played. And my brother's name was Jay, mm -hmm. and he's here under Jay Woodland. Okay. And he was a uh, in the band for four years and uh, played the drums. Hmm. And the other was uh, in the Sesquicentennial in, in 1967, which would have been America's 150th, or Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's 150th, uh, anniversary. They had groups of people who were in different, uh, they called them bells, B-E-L-L-E-S, mm -hmm. and they would dress in okay. the attire of the time. Mm -hmm. And this is my mother, the second one in on the left, uh, Helen Woodling, mm -hmm. and she was in a group called the Bijou Bells. All the uh, churches had groups like this of women, all the uh, industries had groups like this, the Boyardis at the time, uh, and they each got a pin that they would wear during the actual celebration day okay. that they had to wear. If they did not have this on, they could be arrested and put in a jail, make makeshift jail downtown, uh, and they would be a kangaroo court. Have you heard of a kangaroo court? I don't think yeah, so. Like a fake. Yeah, fake jail. Oh. And they had to pay like a dollar to get out or something like that. But they would be put on trial for not dressing appropriately. Oh, okay. And appropriate for that time would have been something like this. Okay. So my mom bought one of those buttons. And if a woman wanted to wear makeup, uh, she had to uh, buy one of these cosmetic permits during the sesquicentennial. Oh. And if she didn't have one of these, again, she didn't have this displayed on her person, she could have been arrested by the Keystone cops or whatever they wanted to call them and be put in kangaroo court. So she had one of these. And all the bells were a garter. Okay. Thus the term bells, the sesquicentennial bells, they had to wear a garter. So those are the three items. Is that what you, what you want to hear when you start filming? Yes, yeah, so if you 
could like tell us about the items then that's what that's what you did so um, is there anything else that you want to tell us about any of these items I did bring another item that has to do with this but I don't know if you wanted to see it we can see it sure okay my father was a member of the union the steelworkers union and I found this just recently among some of his items, and it was actually uh, the union agreement from 1960 between the American Steel Workers Union and uh, the American Car and Foundry Division. And I don't know if you know a lot about unions, but they actually meet and discuss certain items, and the management and the, the union come to an agreement for wages, health insurance, things like that. And it was all written up and uh, in a contract mm -hmm. and agreed upon by the uh, union by a vote. And this was from 1960. So that goes with the, with the items from my father. So do you think that these items like reveal any particular story about Milton's history? Do you think they tell anything about that? It's very, very much a blue-collar town. Mm -hmm. Industries, uh, not a town of doctors and lawyers, you know, not white collars, very much blue-collar. Mm -hmm. And if you got a job at the ACNF, you could, I mean, my father got the job. He graduated in 1941 in June, <coughs> excuse me, Got the job right away because he was a lathe operator. He worked. He uh, worked on a lathe, and ACNF made uh, tank cars for the railroads. And in fact, you can still see they're still making them here in Milton. And he made the same part every day. Now, in December 1941, we all know what happened. Pearl Harbor. He got drafted, but they kept his job for him till he got back. And he, he died, my father died very young, he died at 47, and he died in 1970, and, you know, I, I wanted to bring items to represent him, as I did my brother and my mother. Mm -hmm. And my mother was a, you know, she worked outside the home in a factory, and uh, I was the first of my family to finish college. I have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and I, I taught uh, 34 years in the Danville School District, so. Mm -hmm. 